Let's get Linus Torvald's thoughts on the recent hardware security issues that have affected the Linux kernel and how that creates programming issues for maintainers and contributors. Here's a recent conversation that Linus had with Dirk, who is the head of the open source program office at Verizon. Let's get into what Linus thinks about hardware security issues. But of course there is always drama and, and if, you, if you run a, a kernel project, obviously there are a lot of problems that are outside of your control that you end up dealing with anyway. We had yet another round of hardware bugs that caused well. new sets of changes. I have lost track how many we've had of those in the last decade. It's been a few. So it's been very frustrating. And it's been frustrating not so much because of the bugs themselves. I got into doing kernels because I'm interested in the hardware. So in many ways, when these security bugs happen in hardware, they're really interesting. They are, they are literally why I do kernels, understanding how the hardware really works and, and taking advantage of it, but also in the case of, of, of the bugs, having to work around them. The thing that then is very, very frustrating is that you have these technically interesting problems, but then they are made to be a horrendous experience by all the secrecy and the fact that you can't work on these interesting problems in the open. Which, I mean, the other part of Linux obviously being the, it's not just that I was interested in hardware, but I love just the development model where you can talk to people and work on interesting stuff. And the security issues we've had over the last decade have kind of destroyed that for me. And, and have been a huge frustration and, and, and a huge negative. And it's kind of sad because it's really just about the process is horrendous, but the, the challenges would otherwise be pretty interesting. Well, here is your chance to talk about the next three already before the embargo is lifted. No? Uh, no, I can't. Okay. It's sad. Actually, I don't think it. we have. <laughs> don't, don't go there. Um, but so. The, the common pattern of, of the last few, the last many of them, is always these side channel attacks, is always these unexpected consequences of the optimizations in the silicon and, and how that leads to different timing that allows you to draw conclusions. And so isn't that incredibly fundamental? We now see them finally in Apple silicon because people test Apple silicon more. Is this, we're gonna have this forever? Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of these issues are very fundamental and that is to some degree what makes them interesting. The problems become, the, the problems come up not because the CPUs are doing out of order and speculative work, it's because then to software they only expose the architectural side. Mm -hmm the side that you're supposed to see, the end result. And then that often makes it very hard to work around for software, the, the fact that sometimes they speculate and do things that software didn't tell them to do. And, and almost always the solution to the technical problems is that the hardware then gives us as kernel people, but also as web browser developers, gives us extra knobs to say, in this situation, you need to be a bit more careful. And, and uh, it's one of those things that, as a software developer, it frustrates you because the, we can often react quite quickly in software, but then the hardware people are saying, oh, we have five generations of hardware that we can't fix after the fact. And it will take another couple of years before the actual new hardware that can help you work around the problem comes out. And that ends up being very frustrating uh, with the whole added uh, side of, of all the PR and uh, uh, that <laughs> goes along with any security issues. Well, so you, you talked about the fact how much you love open development and how that secrecy is annoying. So is an, is an open source hardware architecture a differentiator here? I mean, Risk v is, has come along quite nicely in the last few years. Is that an, an improvement? Will that be better with Risk v My fear is that Risk v will do all the same mistakes that everybody else did before them. I mean, we saw this very much 
one of the frustrations when ARM became a, a server platform and became much more relevant for, for that side is they redid all the mistakes that we had already, I had already seen <laughs> a decade or two earlier on x86. And, and it, they fixed them more quickly because by now people have learned something. But, but I'm, I'm just looking forward to when RISC-V becomes more of a big, widely deployed platform. They'll have all the same issues we had on the ARM side and that x86 had before them. And it will take a few generations for them to say, oh, we didn't think about that because they have new people involved. But, but that's the question. I mean, obviously, hardware is very different from software because of the, the lead times to make changes. Yep. But isn't an open source architecture kind of an opportunity for the software guys to come in early and say, oh, by the way, over here, what you're doing here, let's not do this because we've tried this and we know it doesn't work? Or I, is it just that no one listens to us software people? I, I think the issue is that the, even when you do the hardware design in a more open manner, uh, hardware people are different enough from software people. There's a fairly big gulf between the very log and, and even the kernel, much less like higher up the stack where you are working in with so far away from the hardware that you really have no idea how the hardware works. So it's really hard to kind of work across this very wide gulf of things. Uh, and I suspect the hardware designers, uh, some of them have, I mean, there is some overlap, but, but they will learn by mis doing mistakes, all the same mistakes that have been done before. That, that, that seems too inefficient. Um, I mean, you, you obviously have worked at a, at a CPU company before. You've, we've worked on that side. I, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated that we don't have a way to help the RISC-V people to, to do better, because it's, it's kind of cool to see an open source architecture, and maybe we can show that there's more to it. Well, I mean, to some degree, doing hardware now, I think, is easier. Um, I, I, you see it in the, on the ARM infrastructure side, how it took ARM first on the 32-bit side and then on, now on the 64-bit side. It took a few decades to, mm -hmm. to really get to the point where, where ARM and x86 are competing on a fairly equal ground because there was all this software that was fairly PC-centric. Yeah. And, and that has passed. And that will make it easier for new architectures like RISC-V to then come in. But at the same time, when you do something new, for whatever reason, whether it's because you want to have an open architecture or because it's, you come up with a new idea and you go, nobody else has tried this, I will do that. Most of the time, you will ma make mistakes. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, most of them will fail completely without ever, ever anybody hearing about them. <laughs> but even the successful ones take a stumble or two. But I mean, what you said is true. Um, 10 years ago, moving away from, from x86 to a different platform was still incredibly hard. Today, most people don't even know whether you're running on a Graviton or an Ampere yeah. or an AMD or an Intel chip. It's, it's in the cloud, it all looks exactly the same. You have the same software stack, just the price point is different. Well, I mean, that was one of the promises of open source and, and people were saying that this was true 10 years ago and it wasn't true 10 years ago, but it is it's certainly reaching that point now. It certainly is today, yeah. yeah. But let's, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, we talked about- Thanks to the Linux Foundation for hosting this event and conversation. If you want more of this video or you found the conversation interesting between Linus and Dirk, check for the link in the description below. Let me know what you think about the vulnerabilities and hardware which subject software engineers to long lead time fixes. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.